Um, so let me just confirm that they're live. And then there's one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to play a quick intro. Your mic will be hot. Okay. okay. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. We've got a beautiful new friend, Cleo. And uh, she's a friend of Melina Ferguson's. Uh, Merlin Power, Dragon Power. Uh, they're doing the great work over there. She doesn't live too far from uh, Melina. So we're going to talk about that, get to know each other in typical soldier fashion, which means uh, we're going to do it in front of our brothers and sisters. <laughs> With no rehearsal. All right. We'll be right back. We're going to play our intro. If these shows resonate, please share. We're being suppressed big time, but we're going to work through it. We'll be right back. <laughs> happening everybody we've got cleo cleo moore in the house and uh, i'm excited she's a good friend of melina ferguson's so i just want to say welcome from uh you're from victoria australia welcome uh melina's neighbor thank you for coming in sharing space with us and honoring us with your presence we really appreciate it we're always excited to meet new people and and just uh you know share code and experiences thank you, thank you. it's lovely to meet you uh, thank you very much, and it's very lovely to meet you. Uh, and given the fact that you're very good friends with Melina, we won't hold that against you. <laughs> but uh, so, I mean, but I got to ask, like, uh, because I think there's, and it blows my mind because, you know, the Sology demographics uh, go back nine years, and I've, and I've always just kind of poked my head and, and looked at them. You know, what are the largest cities, you know, which are uh, New York, London, Chicago, L.A., Houston, uh, New Delhi and Melbourne is always like, you know, eighth, seventh, and it doesn't have near the population, not to mention Sydney, Adelaide's there, uh, a couple of the other uh, areas. And so I know Australia's got to be lit. My wife's from Australia. She's lit. And, 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 then, and then to know you, Melina, so many other people in the Victoria area, and I'm like, how does this work? There's some kind of something happening in the paradoxical method of the universe where up and down live together or polarities live together. There's got to be a lot of light workers out there. So a, how did you meet Melina and are there, and I know there's a small group of, of people that uh, I think women that work, you, you guys work with doing grid work, working on the land, doing that stuff that so many of you women have done for so long without any notoriety in the background talk about holding space, but are there a lot of people like you and Melina in the area? Is there a lot of light holders? Yeah, I, I think so. Even some that have no idea that they are. Um, yeah, there are. And I have to say when I first moved to the area, because I was in Melbourne itself, and then we moved out here um, back in 2000. And I didn't want to move out here. So we're about 85 k's out of Melbourne. Mm. And um, but my husband was moving his business out here and um, I'd never lived in the country before. Um, so for me, it was a real foreign thing. But um, we moved out here in, in September of 2000 and I remember sitting in a cafe in Mount Macedon and um, 
I was reading a magazine or something, I was doing something, and I looked up and the and there was a tiny flitter of snow coming down. And I just had this moment of, oh wow, I'm I'm actually in the right place. And it wow. was just it, yeah, I knew I had to be here. And so then was, over time, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, there's a there's a lag. Go ahead. Oh, and then over time, um, I started meeting the people I needed to meet, but it didn't happen straight away. I kind of, um, you know, as I'm sure a lot of people experience, it's um, it was a very lonely time for a little while there until I found my crew. And then once I found my crew, which was, you know, met several years later, um, then, then it was great. <laughs> But it's tough until you find that crew um, that gets you and and understands who you are and where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, no it's a doubt. difficult time. Yeah. No doubt. And and so many people that come on this show, we've done a, a, some a little over twenty one hundred episodes now, and so many people they don't. There's not a local crew. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. And, and I remember in the early years, eight, nine years ago, when I was reawakening it, and I used to write a lot, and it would be, you know, a lot of my poetry or prose would, would have the, the sentence, faith is a lonely existence. Because the only people you could find were online, and that was still kind of in its, you know, infancy, infancy I think, you know. But, uh, yeah. So yeah, and it, I didn't even do that because um, I just – I, first of all, I mean, even prior to that, I actually didn't know um, that you could go online and find people that kind of thought like you or saw things that you saw or understood things the way you understood them. So, um, yeah, it wasn't until I started coming across these people that I started realising, oh, there's actually more people out there that that get it or, you know, that, that are like like me. <laughs> yeah, the, the crazies and the woo-woos, right? The, yeah, yeah, that's the, right. The witches that's and the warlocks and the fairies and the elves, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Do you, th do you think that, um, that moving to Victoria, is it state or province? I don't know. I, I should know. My wife's from state. Melbourne. State. Actually, my wife was born in Melbourne. Um, but um, – do you think that that had something to do with your clarity or your awakening? I mean, did did you have a wake up experience or a reawakening? Because a lot of people talk about I had it, then I went to sleep, and then I came back. But I mean, do you think it had something to do with it? Um, well, I was born in Melbourne. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and then actually, for a short period, for five years, we moved to Adelaide, and oh. then came back again. So, um, wow. Oh. Gosh, I, I don't think I've had re one awakening. I think there's been, there's been many along the way, and yes, I have fallen asleep many, many times. Okay. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, as a um, well, how far back do you want me to go? <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. I mean, you know, I've, I've I used to ask that question. It was like a thing, you know, probably for the first thousand shows. I would always start the show out with that question, and. Mm. And it was funny because a, there was a young lady on one time. She couldn't have been 30 years old, which which is young, you know, for the groups I've seen over the years. Mm. It's changing now. But so I said, when did you wake up? She said, this morning. <laughs> and I said, I said, oh, my God, that's like the greatest answer. She goes, no, I mean it. Every single morning, it's like you're just waking up again. It's like literally everything changed. There's a higher truth. You know, I'm like, wow, that's, that, that, yeah. that's it. Well, right, but and I'm finding that I'm, I'm finding that more and more, as in even just this past month, um, is is like that. It it really is like I'm waking up every morning to a completely different scenario playing out, a different, just a different um, way, and it's really uncomfortable because every day feels different. I feel like, you know, um, do you remember 
those toys, those inflatable, they were those big inflatable things, and you used to push them over. They had a weight in the bottom of them, and that sort of oh, that. the weevil. Push them over, and then they'd bounce back. <laughs> the weevils, <laughs> the weevils. Is that what you call them? Well, they had yeah, big okay. ones, and then they had the little ones you play with, and they were called the. And the commercial was the weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I feel like. Well, that's what I've felt like for a long time, but um, in particular lately, I'm just constantly being. Um, kind of pushed over and then I bounce back up again, get pushed right. over, bounce back up again. And that happens multiple, multiple times <laughs> during yeah. the day. Um, and I'm finding I'm having to just really stop and catch myself um, constantly at the moment just to, to not get drawn in, especially here where we are at the moment. Um, yeah, that's got to be it. That's got to be a challenge. We were talking about that last night. We've actually been talking about it for a few days uh, she's not one to typically get, you know, like I'm, a, I had an a issue, you know, like when I woke up and I came out and I started doing videos, like in 2014, 2015, a lot of it was nine 11, you know, that building didn't drop by it's, you know, there was a lot of that conspiracy, which a lot of us have gone through. Cause that was part of our wake up. And then I went through this period of like watching police brutality videos and, <laughs> and I kind of got pulled back in. This is now this was like two, three years ago, and I got pulled back in a couple of months ago. I pull out of my driveway in this small little town that we just we just found a home in for the first time that we've ever been together. And a cop pulls up, asks me to get out of the car, asks me what I'm doing. And I realized that I created that. So I've kind of got away from it. Something that she's always recognized, like what you focus on comes, but she's been noticing. And I think it has something to do with her being born there and her son's there and her other family's there she's been pulled into it. So I can't even imagine being right there. And how would you avoid it? How do you deal with it? It's tough. I'm, I'm like that, that, that toy. It's really, um, you know, you can't, some days I feel like, yeah, this, this is, this is great. I can see it playing out and it is fantastic. They are putting up a fight and, um, and it's actually exciting to see because, you know, like anything, the, the 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 closer you are to sort of being caught out, um, yeah. the more you fight or the, the harder you fight. Yeah. So, and that's what it feels like right now. Um, but, you know, it's, we're now, it's now all over mainstream TV and, and it's, it's really good to see, to be honest, it's, it is really good to see. Um, it, in all honesty, I think it's been harder. Um, it was harder previously, you know, years ago when um, it, there, there was that sort of that lid on on everything. Yeah. Um, and it, it wasn't exposed like it is now. Now it's kind of well, it's out there now. Yeah, it's uncomfortable, yeah. <laughs> but it's well, there. It's just, it's just uh, to me, it's ironic that. You know, if 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 it was going to be this extreme, because it's at least on the surface by the by the what we're all seeing, it's the most extreme place in the world. Yet, yeah, you would think that would happen in New York or you know, and and you know, London or you know what I mean, like one of these cities that has had a let's just say a matrix imprint, like a, like a serious patriarchal imprint, like Washington, D.C., you know, or, or you know, or Jerusalem or, or just places where you've seen the presence of the matrix imprint. But Melbourne, Australia? Do, yeah, it was interesting. Um, I sat down to look at it one day, to like as in not, not with my eyes. Yeah. Um, and I realised that... Um, Melbourne does hold a lot of trauma. It holds a lot of Australia's trauma. We yeah. had one of the, um, uh, you know, biggest high security prisons in Melbourne, and it was in Melbourne um, within, you know, the, the city area. That's now shut down and that was the one, of, one of the places that um, uh, Melina and I and a couple of other people did some work in because they built... Um, They've basically built houses there, and imagine living oh, wow. on a site that yeah. has had some real 
dark, dark energy and trauma. Yeah. So in some ways, in, when I... When I looked at it, I wasn't surprised. I was to begin with before I, I saw it with my own eyes. But, um, yeah, I think for some reason it feels like Melbourne holds a lot of Australia's trauma. I don't know why, um, but that's what it felt like to me. And that light needs needs to shine on Melbourne. And, and it is clearing. It is, yeah, it is clearing. No doubt. I mean, if it's if it's you know as the collect as the individual goes, so goes the collective. So if our process has been to become aware of what we didn't know was there, as you know, as as, uh, as we move towards transformation, it would it would only make sense it would play out that way in the collective. What you said about this prison though brought back a memory, and there's no coincidences, right? I mean, yeah. in a few years ago, uh, a relative had bought a book, and the book was. Um, a historic account of Australia that had just been written like 2015 or something. And I read, I didn't read it all, but I read enough of it because it was talking about how it, there were penal colonies and they were, and there were firsthand accounts of what went on in the prisons and how, you know, whoa. So I was just thinking about that when you said that now my head's tingling and I was thinking about, oh, all of that being absorbed, you know, so to speak, into the land, into the city, swept under the rug, houses built on top. You know, it never existed. Don't tell anybody yeah. about it. So much of that stuff. And I and I can see that now where you're coming from. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. But ultimately, I suppose, um, you know, it's that mirror, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Um, that we're all being shown at the moment. So it has been um, a crazy time in that there's, I'm also seeing a lot of my own stuff coming up and, wow. you know, stuff where I thought, seriously, have I not dealt with all this before? Yeah, exactly. How can right. it possibly be any more? You know, it's been 30 yeah. years, surely, as in that I've been, yeah. working on myself but surely aren't i done yet surely but no and maybe that's maybe that's what what this is another way to describe it or look at it it's like the the because at the same time you're seeing this this cartoon this movie script playing out that's just getting like so distorted you know people are just like going no it just that doesn't even make sense mm -hmm. you know at the same time, you're seeing, I'm seeing these huge expansions by people like you, you know, and, and it's obvious and you can see little flashes that are everywhere that can't be avoided by the mainstream. You know, you just see these things happening, but maybe, you know, because, because oneness is oneness, there's no separation, there's no in between. Maybe it's becoming so extreme because at some point, uh, we will have to own it all, you know, and I guess you being there and then having your stuff come up parallel to what's happening to me is like a big flag. Like, Hey, this is what's happening. Here's the individual. Here's the collective side by side. Same thing's happening. So how is your stuff that's been coming up? Has it been stuff that you had to go and own that you had unknowingly not owned yet? Yeah, interestingly, it's like it's so quick though, really, really quick. It's it happens yeah. in a yeah. flash. Yeah. Um, it never used to be like that. Um, you know, years and years and years ago, um, I used to have a lot of past life stuff coming up or parallel life stuff coming up, whatever you want to call it, and it's and I hated it, hated it. It was I always felt it was a curse, um, and because I would really go in deep and as though it was happening right here, right now. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was tough and it would take me a good, you know, a couple of weeks to recover from each one that, yeah. that, that came up. But it also taught me to trust. And that's always been my thing is, um, Yes, I know they're all out there, 
but um, I'm the resistance queen yeah. and I resist so much. And so when I would be, um, if I was guided to something, I would resist it and that would make my process even harder. Yeah. But it got to a point where um, it, it was no longer um, just a thing that I personally had to deal with. And I'll give you an example um, of, of one of one of the instances. And I had gone to a conference, an endocrinology conference. I work in science. And I watched a guy speak and I thought, oh, and I said to my colleague, we should speak to this guy and see if, if he can help us with our, our patients. Anyway, cut a long story short, we didn't end up speaking to him, didn't go to the conference the following year. Year after that, we went and, and we both presented. Anyway, this, po this person that spoke two years prior um, said to my colleague, I've got to shoot off, but if I can meet with you guys at the dinner tonight, I'd, I'd like to speak to you. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm going to try and keep it as short as I can. Take your time. We got to know each other um, and did a little bit of work with each other. Um, he was also lecturing at one of the top unis in, in Melbourne. And um, anyway, we had a meeting um, at his house. And he had, as you walk in the front door, um, his office was, was to the left as you walked in. And as, as I walked in and I was just about to walk into the office and I saw a door ajar a little bit further along the hallway and the, and the wall was red in there and it just caught my eye. Didn't think any more of it. Um, and then I started a couple of weeks late, oh, actually probably a few days later, I started remembering a life mm. with this person and the... And it was, he was a priest and we had had an affair. I got pregnant and um, and basically he signed the papers for me to be burnt as a witch because he was so afraid of, of being caught out. And so it was huge at the time. You know, I really felt it deeply and it was a real deep wound that I carried for lifetimes. Of course. And um, so a couple of weeks after this meeting, um, after it had all kind, kind of come to the surface and resolved and I thought, oh, thank goodness for that, it's over. Well, a few weeks later, um, I got, you need to go and meditate in that red room. And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not going to this person's house who doesn't even know me and say, oh, can I please meditate in your home? It was the most ridiculous thing I'd, I'd thought was ever asked of me. Yeah. And I flat out refused. I thought, I'm not doing that. And so as the weeks went on, it got more and more and more uncomfortable and I just remember falling apart and saying to my husband, I just don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. And he said, well, you've got to do what you've got to do. And, but I didn't know what that was, except that it was getting more and more uncomfortable to not go and meditate in this man's room. So anyway, I sent him a message um, and said, oh, are you around? I'm up your way over the weekend. Um, thought I'd pop in for a cup of tea. <laughs> and he said, yeah, sure. It's, yeah, no worries. So I turned up and... Um, and sat in his office and he said, so what can I do for you? And all I got in my mind was just be in stillness. And I'm having this conversation in my mind going, are you effing kidding me? Be in stillness. You wanted me to come here and you want me to sit here and be in stillness? You've got to give me something. What am I saying to this man? I just, I can't just sit here and be still. And... I sat there and just stared at him because nothing would come out of my mouth. And he said, so um, would you like a cup of tea? 
And I said, yes, please. And just so that he could leave the room. So I'm having this conversation. You've got to give me something. You've got to give me something. Please tell what am I saying to this man? I just, I don't know what's, what I'm doing here. I need to run out of this house. And he came back and he said, okay, so are you ready to speak? And I went, and I just, I could not physically speak. So I just shook my head and he said, okay, how about I just get about my day and when you're ready to speak, you can let me know. And he said, what I would normally do at this time is I would do a meditation. So you're welcome to meditate with me. Um, otherwise, you can just sit here. And I went, hmm, okay. And sure enough, he opens the door to that red room and in we went and sat down and um, did a meditation and individually he did his thing I did my hip my thing but within minutes I just felt this resolve this oh this relief that we never ever have to have another physical life together and I hardly knew this this man and but I it was so strong that something completely shifted in me and so anyway I finished my meditation and I was kind of sitting there and he eventually finished and I went oh I said oh thanks for that I really needed that and he said wow you look completely different can you share what happened what what's going on and I said oh thanks but I'm done it that's all I needed to do I just needed needed that meditation he said yeah you're done I'm not done yeah, I need to share what's, what's going on. Yeah. And I said, oh, look, really, you, it's, it's, and he, he asked me, did we have a past life together? Mm. And I said, oh, um, do you see? And he said, no, but I have a feeling that I was a priest. And I said, you do see? And he said, no, I've been told I've, I was a priest in a past life. And I've just got this feeling that that you had something to do with this. So anyway, um, he said, please, please share it with me. And I said, look, it's it's resolved and there's just, there's no, there, there's no need. And that was one of the times where I, where I actually remembered the, um, the death itself, like the, the transition. And it was the most exquisite thing you could ever experience wow. so when I shared it with him I didn't share the whole thing I didn't tell him that I was pregnant at the time that he signed the papers for me to be burnt um but and he said I'm really sorry for your death and I said oh god don't be sorry for the death the death was exquisite and he said then I'm sorry for for what came before it and and I thanked him and it was just beautiful, just beautiful. And it was something that resolved in not only me but him. So it went from me experiencing these things on my own to then having to share them with, with other people. And we spent the rest of the day in that stillness that I was being asked to be in. And um we were both hungry after the meditation so we went and made an omelette in silence went and sat outside and and ate it and and spoke a little bit um he was having a barbecue or something that night and so i swept his back porch in silence and i think i was there from 10 in the morning till 4 30 in the afternoon basically in in silence for most of the day and it was the best thing ever i got a message from him the following day to say thank you so much for sharing that with me and that was it never saw each other again never spoke to each other again and never needed to to see or speak to each other ever again but as time has gone on more and more of those people not that I I have to tell people about it or but I feel that um it's no longer a personal thing yeah. it's 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 kind of extending further and further and I feel like now it's it's like the all of us 
yes. are experiencing this together. I get this. This I totally get the relevance of the story. Like, you know, in regard to what we were talking about that's happening there, which really is happening everywhere, um, mm -hmm. the, the polarization, uh, the personal, the personal front that, that is being taken on by people, you know, uh, the insult. When you tell your story, you know, even before you started telling your story, I, I, you know what I mean? I, I just started looking at the whole thing like you're talking about, not with your eyes. And I was thinking, wow, we're all going to kind of wake up at some point. It's all going to be depersonalized. Everybody played a role. And then you end up telling this story where basically you let the energy speak for itself and you accepted it instead of all this, all that, you yeah. know, like it, you just let the energy do its job. It, what a great metaphor for what a great lesson for everyone to listen to at this point, because there are no bad guys, you know? No, and, and and the more we can step aside, and it's hard, it is so hard um, to, to do that when we're so trained to use this and, and think that, that this knows best, this knows what to do, and yet it has no idea, it has no idea that this... The heart is the only thing that can guide us Jeez. and into the direction that we need to go or to give us that the that the truth of um, of where we need to go and what well, we need to do. I mean, we have all these words we use, including ascension, mm -hmm. okay, including woke up or awake or woke. And, and it's like go through the... Uh, the, the, the door of the heart, and now say these words. <laughs> and they all take a different meaning on it. It's like, it's, it's not just clarity and truth. It's, it's, look, free will. I believe, no, in my own field of energy, in my own field of presence. We, I chose to come here. I exercised my free will to come here. Why? It was a heart based decision. It was a decision to grow and a decision to assist the collective in growing, which is in a absolute perfect parallel to my own growth. And, uh, and I think we, if that's the case, it's true for everyone. Everyone came here from the heart, no matter how bad an actor they played, you know, and we don't really know. Now, some seers like you would, but we don't really know, was I everything, and did I do everything? Was I the bad guy, the good guy, the oppressor, the victimizer, the perpetrator, the victim? We don't really know. We don't have to know. This is a quantum environment now. Whatever you got, I can get. I can sit down with you like you and this gentleman, and that's what you did. You merged for six hours without saying a word. All that information was passed back and forth. You said, are you a seer? He said no, but he was seeing. Mm -hmm. He absolutely was seen. How he got the information, whether somebody told him or not, doesn't matter. That's not the point. That's yeah. not the point. Yeah. You know? And it doesn't matter if the other if the other person recognizes it or not. Yeah. Um, I had a colleague that I worked with for um, about five years, and. Boy, did this person trigger me. Oh, my goodness. Um, the reason being I had a life with them where he was a white man living with his wife. I was their black maid. Um, they couldn't have children. She couldn't have children. So he would rape me, get me pregnant, and then beat me so that I would miscarry. This would happen over and over again. So every day I'd go to work, this person, I would just be triggered by this, this person. And eventually one day, this is, 
probably three years into us working together, they said to me in a meeting, I own you. I'm your master. I'm talking in this life. Yeah. And, well, <laughs> you can just imagine how I think I you went into that. I, I don't know if you watched Quentin Tarantino movies, but I bet you went into yeah. the Kill, Kill Bill uh, Uma Thurman oh. character. <laughs> I could just oh, see yeah. You. <laughs> right. So what that happened? Was that was me. And when I got home from work that day, I just, I was, I didn't know how, I didn't know how to, how to be because it, it brought something up in me that I had no idea. The rage that was in me, I had no idea it was there. So I had no idea what to do with it. No idea what to do with it. And I would beg every morning I would wake up. No exaggeration. Every morning I would wake up. I'd say to my crew, please, please let me resign today. Please, I'm begging you. I cannot do this anymore. How can you do this to me? You are so cruel. And every morning I'd get, not yet, not yet. So about two years later, I'm a slow learner, about two years later, sitting in a meeting room again, exactly the same words came out of this person's mouth. And I looked into their eyes and thought, I didn't say anything, I just looked into their eyes and thought, you poor love, you have no idea why you're saying what you're saying. I could even see it in their face that, that they were a little bit taken aback, that those words actually came out of their mouth. And I didn't flinch, did not flinch. And I didn't even think about it at the time. The very next morning I woke up, mind you, six months before this, my husband had had a really serious car accident and mm -hmm. didn't work for three years. So this is six months into it. Woke up the next day and was told, you can resign today. And I went, are you kidding me? We're on one wage, mine. <laughs> there is nothing else. If I'm not working there, there is nothing else. Yeah. And, and I got, well up to you you can either resign or you can stay so I walked out and I said to my husband I'm resigning today and he said okay you got to do what you got to do and I did but I knew in every cell of my body that it was gonna it'll work out you know that's and it makes you wonder it makes me wonder uh so obviously you okay so because there's always multiple meanings and multiple purposes, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So I'm yeah. looking at this thing from your point of view, and I'm thinking, okay, they're not going to let her resign until she learns the lesson, which, you know, you just think, right? But as I'm listening to you and you finish the story, I was like, she actually couldn't leave until she did what she could do to bring him into alignment. Like you stared at him and not flinching. It's even like the guy you talked about earlier. You didn't you didn't talk about the depth of the story, but the code was being exchanged. You know? The story you, the story uh, didn't matter. The story doesn't matter. I was a black woman yeah. who had been mistreated. I ended up leaving and having one of the children. And yeah. I was I could I could barely even feed the child because um, he had basically made it clear that nobody was to hire me. So I, I had a really, really difficult life. But ultimately, it, it doesn't matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter because, yeah, okay, I was a black woman in, in that life. This woman, I'm a, I'm a white woman. The there was another one where I was a man who started a war, and that was one other death that I that I remember. As in, um, you know, it was, and interestingly enough, it almost feels like what's going on now. So I'm 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 not surprised this just popped in my head. But I I I was an egotistical man who had led thousands and thousands of people to death. Mm. Um, but just before it, it was kind of like I had this moment of, uh oh, I've kind of gone a little bit too far here. 
but I couldn't turn back. So I kept going and it led to thousands and thousands of people dying. But in the death, I also saw the truth of the, the meaning and why that happened and what that was going to then um, you mean create. In, in the, your death, in your death in that life. In that life, yeah, that's let me, right. Let me take a stab at this. Okay, so because I was just about to ask you when you talk about what you remembered about the dying and how exquisite it was, um, I was going to pop that out now. There's no coincidences, right? So I can imagine what you just said. You're this man. You went too far. You couldn't stop it. You caused thousands and thousands of deaths in the physical sense. Yes. Yet you Then you transition and you see it for what it was, which I was just thinking in my head as you were saying, I thought, well, he was actually, if you look at it a certain way, accelerating the process for people possibly ending a lot of pain for people, taking them to that exquisite ride that you described earlier. So I don't know. What did you, what did you recall being what you, what you saw as you were leaving that life? Um, I, look, I can't recall it exactly, but it was basically, um, it needed to happen in order to create, create some, some unity. There was so much dysfunction um that without something drastic like that yeah. which is not un, not unlike what's happening now yeah, true. Um, it reminds me very much of it and it feels like that here it feels like that it feels like um it almost feels like our government's kind of gone oh, okay we've kind of backed ourselves in a corner here and we don't actually know how to get out of this and it it does feel like that um but it was about the collective and, it, it, and it, it did create unity to some degree. I mean, yeah. we've had, you know, yeah. hundreds of lives since then to go backwards and forwards. But ultimately, there, I, I, I played a role. There was a purpose. There was a purpose. That's really, that's really interesting because, you know, the, the, uh, the paradox factor and the polarity factor it's taken on a new light. You know, it's like, it's, it's strange. It's strange. It's, we're seeing these two extremes of the spectrum that are actually cohabitating in the field at the same time. And, and, and it doesn't even make sense. It's like water and oil. Uh, if you look at some of the old, and, 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 and we got to give them their credit. You know, if you look at the, uh, some of the conspiracy uh, theories and, and patterns which is where they create, where there's a crisis created, like 9-11 or Pearl Harbor. And they even talk about it mobilizes the people. It brings everybody into a singularity, right? And they, But the difference I see is you're talking about this. There may even be that pattern coming from the intention of those actors. We're going to create a crisis. We're going to create more control uh, because we've got them all in the same box. But at the same time, I see the other end of the spectrum, and there's actually a mobilization occurring of soul power, of people going, hey, you know what? This ain't going to hang. This isn't going to work anymore. You know, so it's weird that that uh, they're both playing at the same time. It's not, it's not unlike, you know, I'm sure we've all been there, where you go to a workshop or um, I remember coming back from Peru and for a, a while there I experienced being in complete bliss and love and like where I thought it was never possible to experience that on this plane and but I did and then all of a sudden you come out of it and you desperately want it back. Right. But we can all be in that stillness and love and in that energy when we're sitting on top of a mountain or in a workshop where everybody else is like-minded and um, um, it's, it's just it's easier to do because everybody's holding the same energy, the same space. But when you come out of that, it's a little bit harder to mm -hmm. hold that, that space. 
Mm-hmm. So right now it, it almost feels like um, we've reached a point where we've done all the workshops, we've done all the work, we've done all the, and right. now we're being given the real test yeah. to actually be here out in um, in the real real world. Yeah. Let's see how, how well we can hold our light or our, or our let's walk the talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, it, that's right. But like you were talking about your numerous wake ups, and we all can relate. Yeah. And there seems to be somewhat of a pattern or characteristic in a lot of people that come on the show, myself included, which was you have these dynamic, incredible divine episodes and divine intervention in the biggest wake ups. It's like, hey, you're not only human. You know, you just saw a 12 foot angel or whatever the case was. And you're like going, wow, I'm really something. You know, it's a challenge to the ego, you know, and all that stuff. Because we still got to go back and now function in the world like you're talking about. And it's not always that easy. But what I see in your words is it's like, you know, let me just say this too. A lot of people will say, "Where where did all my guides go? Like, I don't have the visuals anymore. I don't have the clairs anymore. And I'm having to operate on this kind of like super sensitive, hyper uh, sensitivity of intuition versus, hey, you guys were helping me before. So it's almost like we were being weaned. And now the the charge is coming not from the multidimensional aspects. You know what I mean? It's not coming from all the yep. warm and fuzzy stuff. It's coming from the dirt. It's coming from the soil. It's coming from the earth. It's coming from each other. And I think now, too, about what you said about the first story, because I was thinking to myself, how in the hell did she go in and be quiet? Well, one, she couldn't say anything. And two, it was regardless, it was the impact of what she received. So if we're receiving this in a, let's just call it a literal level in the physical experience, and it gets to the point where it's undeniable and we're going to have to try something new, which is what you did. You went in. The guy did what he did to you. Uh, these stories are amazing, by the way, the ones you told. Uh, and yet you were quiet. And look what happened. You know? Yeah. I, I, and I think, I think especially right now, I remember driving home from work one day it was several years ago now, and I was listening to um, Russell Brand yeah. in an interview, and he, I can't remember what he was talking about, but he was he was um, fighting for the for the good, yeah. let's say. And while I was listening to him speak, um, I realised that a fight is a fight. That's right. Whether you're fighting for good or whether you're fighting for bad, a fight is a fight. A fight fuels the fire. And I could almost see, even though he was so passionate about this thing that he was fighting for, he was fueling the fire. That's right. And it was the it wasn't it wasn't even the words that he was using. It was the 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 energy behind the words. Yeah. And What's happening at the moment is, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying people shouldn't have a say or shouldn't speak, but the the heart only knows love or the absence of love. And when you share your truths or your um, guidances or your passion through a wound, it's going to fuel the fire. Yeah. Only no. way it can neutralize you can say exactly the same words but through love through the healed wound yeah. Yeah. and it'll have a completely different and, effect on it and when in it's doubt different. follow your example and shut up <laughs> don't say anything because when yeah. you were having these exhilarating deaths you weren't still charged you 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 could see everything and i think this is morgan and i were talking about this last night embodying getting to a point now where you can't leave the human out but still utilize what you can connect to and what you've pulled down already you know i remember 
about three weeks ago getting this, or maybe even a month ago getting this one, which was about projection. Of course, it's all about me, you know, and I'm trying to get there. Well, if this happens, how can this be about me? And, you know, I mean, and you're going deeper and deeper and deeper into our own personal rabbit holes. And I remember it came in and it said, look, projection is projection. It doesn't matter who started the fight. And I went, yeah. oh, shit. So there is no valid projection. There is no valid acting out. Yeah. There's not. And, and so if, and, and you said something at the beginning of the show, I'm gonna, I never go back and watch these, but I don't have to go back and watch it. And it was something about the ego. You know, I don't think you use that word, but, but it was like, if I can't let go of this bone that your premier is, you know, the devil's son or whatever, whatever it is, if I can't let this bone go, I'm the separation. Yeah. I'm the separation, period, in the story, you know? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I think that's one of the big things that's, to me, is getting louder and louder this year. I mean, it's at the point now where I don't see how anybody, but if it keeps going on this trajectory, how by the end of the year, anybody will be able to deny it. And that is, there is no middle ground. There is no compromise when it comes to heart, the truth. It just is what it is. And you can call it the zero point. And that maybe is a good metaphor, but the bottom line is there is no, there's no, there's no other option. It's not, you can say, oh, I'm a 99.99%, but universe, this absolute must stand or that one must stand and I'll be your girl. I'll be your guy. You know, the universe would be like, excuse me, (laughs) send them back down for another one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, please no, please no. (laughs) Uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. That's yeah, that's that's exactly right. And and that's you know we've all we've all um, talked the talk. Yeah. But now it's really about walking the walk. And okay. and it does take that um, that being in in the stillness it, yeah. and stopping and mm-hmm. and feeling, not just constantly and it's it's interesting too in in the work that I do and of course I have the advantage of being with Morgan so I've gotten a lot of my education accelerated in terms of like the things you're talking about and uh, but it's really interesting because in the work that I do in the in this community let's just put it that way in these communities of what they call light workers star seeds whatever woke people whatever there's been a dominance, and I'm talking energy here. There's been a dominance of uh, the patriarchal imprint on primary. I'm just going to say primarily masculine. Eighty percent of the women, of the people in the group are women in these groups, but eighty percent of the people out there talking, like me, have been men. I'm like, what's going on? Now there's been a transition. My point is, it's interesting because of what you said about the silence, and that is true. But it's like the feminine energy in all of us is having is is coming forward now to speak. So in this time when silence is so effective, let the energy work. At the same time, to me, they're bringing this wisdom of silence with what it's taught them. And they're and they're having to speak it into the literal world, you know, while maybe the masculine's learning to shut up, you know. But I mean, it's. It's interesting because there's more and more and more of you guys stepping up. Are you women, I should say? Yeah, and it's, um, I think, I mean, obviously with social media, it obviously gives us a lot more um, um, access to it. And I have to, and I have to be honest with you, this is not something I would normally talk about with too many people. And this is the first time ever that I've ever had a conversation like this on any sort of platform um, mm-hmm. other than a small group of, of, of friends. So this is a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Um, oh, I was going to share something then. Yeah, it just with I think the stillness needs to come in with um, when the way the neurons in our brains work, if you think about, the, the neurons in in our brains um, it it one neuron will produce a chemical 
and it releases that chemical into a, a synapse, like a, a space between the other cell. And the other cell can take up that chemical. If it needs to, it takes up that chemical. But this, this cell does not force the chemical into the next cell. Right. And I think that's where we get a little bit mistaken. And we are. We're cells of the earth. We operate yeah. the same way. Yeah. So when we speak, it's not about not, not speaking but just being mindful of, of the words that we breathe life into because when we release them into our synapse or our space, we have to be th then be still to allow the next cell to either take it up, and it's none of my business yeah. whether that cell takes it up or not. Yeah. No infringement. Yeah. No, no, I it, can't it, make yeah. that cell take my chemical and and you know use it like i would or believe it like i would or yeah i get what you're saying and and i've been getting this uh i mean I, cause I, you know everybody's got their thing right and i'm watching the field of what i do so i can i can speak to that and and so this whole thing like what you just said you just hit the nail on the head like if you just take this conversation as an example you haven't come in the door telling people what to do <laughs> Telling people what's going to save them. You know what I mean? Uh, this process, uh, this belief system. You're just relaying information, which is really code. You're relaying information. These two examples of these past life ex memories carry so much code. And to me, that, just hearing that, I've never heard a story like that. I've never heard two oh, stories. Yeah. No. I've heard stories of past lives and I've, you know, this and that. But the way you're talking about it, how it related and correlated to your physical experience and your and your human expansion, your soul's expansion while you're incarnated, you know, that's that's the the, the to me the wisdom of the silence, right? That's that intuition, that that uh, that sacred wisdom. And I guess what I'm trying to say is. I see much more value, and this just came to me. I mean, I went off this morning on a, on a show we did spontaneously, and I, and I think I was talking in this direction part of it, which was this is what we need to talk about. We need to hear more stories like you told. We need to hear these perspectives because they carry memory, they carry code, and as this code is exchanged, then it becomes open and alive in us, and our muscle memory, if you will, our our supernatural memory, uh, if you will, starts to come into play. And then everything parallels with that. If, if, if truth goes up, the heart goes up, uh, teleportation goes up, and bilocation goes up, and alchemy goes up, and magic goes up. But I really believe it's not about the narratives of what the hell's going on out there. And I don't think it's about the the, let me fix this, you know, and tell you how you need to run your life or whatever the case is. I think it's about relaying these stories and these memories and the true information that really does come. Where does it come from? It doesn't come from oral history. It's as valuable that's, as that's been to the human civilization. It comes from being quiet and receiving, you know, and this is what y'all bring to the table. Thank you. It does. It does. Um, and there's a hmm, – I was going to go into something then, but, yeah, that's okay. Know. That's right. Um, We're I'm just not, back in the silence. We'll I'm just let the energy on speak. On a, yeah, on another plane at the moment. <laughs> but, isn't, but isn't that great, though, that, that – yeah, because this has been happening. I mean, this has been happening a lot to me and people that come on like, oh, what was I talking about? I mean, the 3D memory is gone. It's, it's, it's going away. And I think it's going yeah. away because it's, it's, it's filling that space for a different type of memory, a different type of recall thing. I mean, how many people have come on this show this year, especially as the year's gone on, and they said, man, I'm getting downloaded. Like, I think you said it earlier about how fast it's going. I'm getting downloaded, downloaded, downloaded. And I don't even know what the hell I got downloaded. Like, I don't even have time to try to figure it out because the next one comes in and then they'll come back and say, and then I also have this understanding or I'll hear this voice. It'll say, you don't need to know when you need to know it'll come back to you. 
when the when the opportunity or when the uh, the situation uh, comes up that you need it, it's going to be there. And this is yeah. the new lifestyle. You know? Yeah, and it's and I think that's that does have a lot to do with resolving the you know collective trauma, because what I did notice from those traumas, once they were healed. Um, when you, when you're living so and it was, it was lifetime after lifetime carrying these traumas yeah. and you you react so while the trauma is there I would react in the same way it's like the same thing was happening lifetime after lifetime because I still I reacted as though that trauma was still yes present in my life, even though it was, you know, a couple of lifetimes later, let's say, I'm still reacting in the same way. But once you remove that trauma, you no longer react, you act. Yeah. And so you, there is a moment of, oh, I don't know what to do with this now because I don't feel the need to react yeah. in yeah. the way I've reacted, yeah. you know, for, for many lifetimes. So there, there's a... Um, I suppose there's a, a bit of a um, a time where you need that stillness to sort of feel what what it feels like to not have that in your life anymore, not have that yeah. trauma or not have that reaction anymore. Yeah, and I think that's been a part of um, these ego deaths <laughs> that have taken on new meaning in 2020 because it's like you lose something like that, which should be a victory, right? That should be like, yeah. And then you're like standing there going, oh, but that part of me, that warrior part of me <laughs> that was the reactor is gone now. So what's yeah. left? What's there? You know, is it this limp noodle that, that I thought was the alternative? Or because he, I can't go back to this alpha male reaction, you know. So we're losing all these identities. That, and that's a little painful, really. Like, what do you do? Yeah. yeah, to sit there and, and um, I, I remember going through a stage where I, I, I did not want to judge and there were certain people that I'd be sitting with thinking, well, what am I going to say to this person? Because anything we ever spoke about was judgment. <laughs> was judgment. Right. And it was it was really difficult because... Some of the relationships that I had with people that I had to let go of because I no longer felt the need to behave or react yeah. the way I was reacting or behaving. It's it's really it's it's strange. Yeah, to, it is strange. It yeah, is, it is strange. And it's even and it even happens with like this year, even people that you've met during your awakening, like friends. Like it's not that you're not you're just not in the same playground anymore. It, it's, it reminds me of the thing, the second story you told, because like you couldn't leave the job. I mean, I would have freaked the hell out. Somebody said that to me, even if I didn't have the memory, I'm your master, you're the slave. I'm like, fuck you. Oh, excuse me. But you know, but. They're, they're the words I use, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. <laughs> but you know. There were some hand gestures as well. <laughs> <laughs> but but there was but when I when I heard you say that uh, I was like, oh, she couldn't leave until she put her field into a, a balance, a freak, a, you know, a, a vibrational level that would then be seen by him and align him. I mean, and, and I know it's mutual; it's always symbiotic, right? And uh, but. You know these, they, like, like so. These people that I've met, let's just say over the last few years, I've, I've, I've had a lot of people, you know, come and go. That, I mean, it's just I don't know. It's like uh, it was our time finished, at least for now. I've because I've always heard too since I woke up, come together once, you come together forever, and so it doesn't mean you could come together. I mean, how many of us in the age of the internet have had, you know, one night or 
a couple of days where we meet someone we're like oh my god i know you from a past life and everything's like and everybody falls in love and da, da, you know and you're like and then it yeah. just that's it you were just supposed to be there just like you going to that guy's house and being in silence for six hours i mean that's that's absurd <laughs> yeah, it is, and I can't believe I did it. <laughs> well, if it if it doesn't make sense, I mean, to me, that's that's part of the new lifestyle. If it doesn't make sense, do it. If you're being told, and it doesn't make sense, that's probably about a hundred percent. You can bet. You follow that guidance. The the less sense it makes, the bigger the payoff. Oh, uh, absolutely. Well, yeah. The more ridiculous mm -hmm. the request, I find the more. Um, profound the yeah. lesson. Yeah. The more profound the lesson. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which, if you look at what we started talking about at the top of the show going on in Victoria, if you look at that, you can see it may look like the worst case scenario, but it's actually, it's actually, well, if, if things are constructed the way that we we're talking about, it's going to be the it's going to be like the the catalyst in the other sense it's going to be like wow look what they did you know yeah. and uh and then it, of course you know we know that soul the the, the soul is the real virus i mean cuz yeah. souls feed off of the illumination of other souls and and the frequencies and the and that they carry it but yeah yeah so you're yeah. you're you're in the uh, epicenter at this point yeah and I think now is probably the most important um, time to really practice what you preach. You know, it feels like... Um, Absolutely. You know, um, do you remember the snow globes? Yeah. The little, yeah. I'm and old. Where you, <laughs> yeah, I'm where you take them and the snow goes everywhere and then you sit them down and the, the snow falls. Well... It feels like our job at the moment is to put that down. So, you know, this is happening. It's been shaken, shaken, shaken. Yeah. And the more we buy into it, the more we're shaking it. Yeah. But as soon as we all s sit back and just let it play out yeah. and, and place the snow, snow dome down, and all of a sudden the, the flakes start yeah. falling. And the picture emerges because you can't see the picture while all the, the snowflakes are all, you know, floating about. It's hard to see the image behind, you know, the... It's kind of, the, it's kind of like the exquisite the, death you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like you're, yeah, you're, in the, you're in the middle of the snow globe and then you get sh shot out of the, the cannon and, and it all drops down and you see the, the perfect divine... Yeah, except now we don't have to cross over to see it. Exactly. All we need to do That's is exactly put it right. down. As soon as we put it down, the, the snow starts settling and the picture forms and the image that's, is right there in front of us. To me, that's the most exciting thing is the potential of what you're talking about, the pit, potential of being incarnated in what we've perceived as a very dense, slow-moving vibrational realm and to be actually able to do all the things that we can do in dimension, dream state, you know, yeah. I mean, this is this is like I think it's going to blow our mind. We think about, oh my God, truth is stranger than fiction, and this happened, and that that can't be true. But it's the other side that I'm focusing on. Like, wow. I mean, how powerful am I? Like, I mean, I know. You know, I had an out of body the other night with my wife, and I was like, "Where am I at?" You know, I'm like, "Oh, this is going to happen more." You know, this yeah. little voice. So, I mean, like, I had, I, I don't. Nobody knows. That's the way I look at it. Nobody has any idea. But whatever it is, I think it's going to be. It is the greatest, at least up to this time and space, the greatest adventure any of us have ever been on, and the ballsiest, I, the ballsiest trip we've ever been on. Yeah, you know? I. I agree. I remember um, um, not long after this all started, I had a moment of where I was in tears and just out of the blue I was in tears with this knowing that I can't, I can't believe I'm actually here yeah. to experience this. There was just this joy that 
I'm here. I'm act this is actually happening and I'm here to see it. I'm finally here to see it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to go anywhere. You know, I, I do not want to go anywhere. I want to be here for this. I've, we've worked this hard to get here. I don't want to be leave and then get reincarnated and come back. And even if we're, I come in as a, you know, a diamond gold child that can, you know, be a Buddha from the first day, I want to do it. I want to keep going and I want to experience it. And I've, one of the main things I've learned from my wife is you, nothing matters until you embody it. You know, I mean, I ran around saying, I am soul. I am soul for four or five years when I started this. And then I ran into her and she's like, well, you know, uh, you don't really know you're human. <laughs> you can't really go know your soul until you know you're human. I'm like, Oh really? yeah. yeah. What does that look like? Ooh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> But, you know, like you said earlier, it's moving faster. It's getting easier, the processing and the information and everything. So it's it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And you are a beautiful, beloved sister. And I am so honored to have those like you, like my friend Pamela Johnson that was on, on a few days ago. Jennifer Ray's been on. Allison from New York. I'm going to try to get on. But this is what the world needs. The world needs... And it's it's beyond humility. It's I don't even know how to explain it. I don't know how you guys have waited so long, you know, and I can understand the impatience at times with the masculine energy, because inherently, just as you inherently had this, uh, you know, inexplicable uh, fear of stepping up or being heard because of the ancestral repression and oppression and murders and rapes and burnings. At the same time, there was some part of you that knew he, that the masculine was coming. And thank you, all of you, for holding space. And that means, that means everybody, because I'm sure I was a woman, you know? I mean, but wow. Yep, we've been it all. <laughs> Powerful. I'd love to get together with you again sometime, maybe later in the year. Absolutely. And, thank you. Yeah, I'd love to speak with you again. Yeah, and maybe, uh, I don't know, I wanted to get into what you and Melina are doing. Maybe next, if I get her on, if uh, Leilani gets her on soon, maybe I can talk to her about it. But I'd love to get you guys on camera all together. You know, oh, yeah, that'd be great. You know, that's a little concept that we've been working on. There's a cosmic group, a cosmic ladies group was on this morning for like the third time. There's another group out of uh, northern U.S., uh, Lori Peterson and her gang. And I just, when I first saw it, I said, why don't you guys come on the screen and share what you do when you're alone together? You know, I mean, I think there's so much code in there and so far so good. So think about it and lobby for me <laughs> because it's good for everybody. And thank Absolutely. you. So much. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank yeah. Very much. And all blessings to you and your family. Uh, okay. And thank you again for honoring us with your presence. And uh, you're just a joy. So I don't know what else to say. Appreciate it. Peace out, everybody. Take care. Bye.